Is that a Lorax tattoo? Yeah, it is. What inspired you to get it? Um, when I got into teaching, I ended up um, kind of coming with this idea. So unless comes from the idea that unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. And so it kind of came in that idea when I started teaching. Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. What made you decide to pursue engineering? Um, believe it or not, um, when I started um, in high school and stuff, one of the things that my teacher said was, oh, you're good at math and science, which is actually a horrible way to say go into engineering. <laughs> um, but uh, because of that, I went into engineering field, and then um, from there ended up kind of liking it. Uh, my favorite power tool, so actually, um, I mean, if you take a look in here, I got lots of tools in here, but my favorite power tool we don't actually have at the school, it's actually something called a lathe. It's a huge machine that spins around very fast, and you can go along, and you can start any sort of object in revolving motion. You can start cutting into it in all different fashions and get all sorts of really cool looking things. And you can work with it metal, plastic, wood, um, all sorts of different tools. So. Hopefully someday we'll have that here at this school, but right now, we got the smaller stuff. Yeah, hope so too. Yeah, very cool. Um, what's the most interesting student project that you attend? Um, so here at this school, I would say um, the one that most of the students end up liking the most is the hydraulic arms, which you can actually see some of them down in this area over here, where students have to actually use power tools. And in, at Beverly High, a lot of students haven't been exposed to power tools and cutting wood and using stuff along those lines. And so for a lot of students, it ends up being their first time being involved in it, and it's really cool to see what ideas they come up with. Um, favorite project that I've done of all time, actually, um, last school, I'm a musician, and students would actually build their own electric guitars from scratch, building all the pickups, building everything from it. So a lot of cool things you can do with engineering, which I like. That's awesome. Um, what's the coolest thing you 3D printed? I see a 3D printer over there. Yeah, so uh, this 3D printer, we actually have two more 3D printers that are in storage right now because of all the work we're doing right now. Um, these 3D printers, actually, I used um, about nine of these back during the pandemic. Uh, when the pandemic first hit, the school I was teaching at was a vocational school, so we were very big into manufacturing things. And because there was a lack of you know, medical devices out there, one of the things we did is we designed and 3D printed out face shields. We ended up printing out something close to 4,000 face shields for local hospitals, nursing homes, stuff along those lines. Um, that was kind of cool because not only was it you know, 3D printing something on here, but it was also trying to fine tune everything to make it go as fast as you can to produce as many as possible. That's very cool. Nice. And what's your favorite gadget in this room? In this room? Um, well, my favorite gadget. <laughs> favorite gadget's actually over here. This is, I think, the favorite gadget of all the physics and the engineering teachers. Uh, basically, Tesla coil, cattle prod. Basically, what it does is it takes a low voltage, like the 120 volts we have coming from the outlet here, and it pumps it up to thousands and thousands and thousands of voltages, which you probably can't see too well right there because we're in the, dark, or the light, but if you're in the dark, or if I tase you with it, you'd get a good feel of it. Um, but it does a lot of really cool, neat tricks you can do with it. And it's also just exciting and because my background is electrical power. I love it. Awesome. What was it like working at a power plant? Um, so I absolutely loved, so I was a nuclear engineer by trade. I loved working at the nuclear power plants. Um, it was a new thing every single day. I mean, you're talking about some of the biggest equipment, power generating stations that you can think of out there. You have transformers that are pretty much larger than the size of this room right here. Um, it was very interesting. It was very, I would say, I felt privileged to be able to work on this equipment and be able to see what we had out there. And um, like for instance, I purchased circuit breakers, which circuit breakers for your homes typically cost about maybe 20, 30 bucks. I had to purchase ones that were $500,000 a piece. And so that kind of gives you the range of what you're looking at. So it was cool in that aspect. Yeah. And what do you miss most or least about the power plant job? Um, I miss traveling to different power plants and being able to work on that equipment that, um, you know, most no one else has a chance to see or get to do. Like, I got to go underneath the nuclear reactor. How many people get to do that? Um, thing I don't miss about it, um, 
basically, right now, I'm a father right now, so traveling as much as I would have to for continuing that field, I'm happy not to be doing that. Favorite go-to meal? I would say probably um, like shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi or pizza. I like to cook a lot, so anything along those lines, Italian, I love doing. Mm, delicious. And what's your spirit animal? <laughs> My spirit animal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always liked dogs growing up, so I guess wolves. Oh. Wolves, yeah. Very cool. And what's the most important life lesson you've learned over your career? Um, failure is okay. Failure is a good thing. Failure is not a bad thing. You learn from it. The problem with that people have a lot with failure a lot of times, I think, is that they don't learn from it. They don't grow from it. But I feel like if you do, it's all the better. Yeah. And what, what's your ultimate life goal? My ultimate life goal? Yeah. Uh, leave the planet better than here. So when I go, I want to have made imprints on people's lives. Anything along those lines is what I care. That's awesome. All right. So seeing as you're a musician, Mr. Shaw, mm -hmm. what three songs do you jam out to in your car? What, three songs? Uh, <laughs> um, I'll go with band. I can do bands. Songs I'm a little harder on uh, touching on, but um, let's see. Descendants, um, we'll go with Dispatch, and we'll go with, I don't call it Ramones. Right. I'm big into the punk and also big into anything instrumental, anything having good beat to it, I'm for. Right on. All right. Who do you look up to as a little kid? Uh, as a little kid, I would say um, the person I probably looked up to the most was my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a high school gym teacher. Uh, he was very well known in his town, um, helped a lot of kids that were in bad situations out of them, and um, always put family first, put uh, kids first and cared about. And what's your favorite donut flavor? Favorite donut? <laughs> yeah. I would go. I would go Boston cream. Boston cream is probably not a bad uh, bad choice. Has a lot of good sugar and a lot of different tastes. Has a chocolate in there. All the good stuff. Good choice. Good choice. And if there was a zombie apocalypse and you could choose one item from your room to defend yourself with, what would you choose? Hammer. Nice. Hammer. You don't have to run it on power. You don't have to run anything with it. You can, you know, provide good blues to the head. Best way to kill a zombie. Yes, sir. You recently became a parent, too. What has been the most rewarding part of being a dad? Um, I'd say the most rewarding part is seeing how much she's growing, um, how much intellectually she's gaining from everything, and also seeing how much she actually likes being around me, which is kind of a good thing, I feel, in my uh, you know, side of things. Um, she was away with my wife for a while and came back recently and just went running up to me and hugging me and that was like the best feeling in the world so that's amazing and not counting this job what job has been your favorite and why um, I would say when I was in uh, college when I was in school in Worcester um, I played at a woodwind quintet which basically so I'm a musician I played the bassoon clarinet guitar bass I've been in bands. The Woodwind Quintet was kind of nice because um, you kind of could go at your own pace. You would pay, play these places that I would never have gone into when I was younger, like a lot, of, a lot of people with a lot of money, stuff along those lines. So you get good dinners, you get paid very well for doing something you love to do. Nice. And in a life or death situation, how fast do you think you could climb to the top of a spruce tree? I'd say probably matters how high it is, but I would say I probably could get to most trees in probably 20 seconds. I'm a climber, so. Nice. Would you rather jump barefoot five feet onto a pile of Legos or hit your ankle with a scooter? Um, definitely Legos. <laughs> My ankle's been screwed up enough from track and field in college that I'm, I'm happy with jumping onto Legos. Okay, okay. So, what district would you be in if you were in the Hunger Games? So, I'm happy that I actually knew that this was one of the questions you were going to ask me because I don't know what the different districts <laughs> yeah. so I looked them up and I would say probably, uh, was it the last district there, the one that was, 
what the capital didn't fight against or didn't have a hold of that was like with all the nuclear weapons. I feel like there because uh, I would not want to be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> Try to fight off as much as possible. Good choice, good choice. So, what's your favorite movie? And if you could live in your favorite movie, what would you Favorite movie? Um, I would say Star Wars or um, Casablanca. And I definitely would not want to live in either one of them. <laughs> and what have you learned most from physics that you use in everyday life? Um, probably stuff dealing with uh, acoustics, um, you know, frequency, stuff along those lines, because I use, used it in my electrical engineering career, my nuclear engineering career, also my musician career. It's come in handy a lot. That's interesting. And what do you hope students will take away from your class? Um, my main hope is that just in the end of it, if they are able to get excited about the material and learn more on their own, that's what I care about the most, because I think most students aren't going to learn everything in the world from me as a teacher itself, but if they get excited enough that they end up going off and learning more stuff from it. Sure. That's what I love. That's awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you later. All right, thanks. Bye.